Hello everybody, Professor William Watkin here, and today I'm going to discuss how even Santa Claus needs to be GDPR compliant these days. Last week, the head teacher of my kids' school stopped me as I was preparing to don a frayed Santa's outfit for the Christmas fair, panicking that I'd not yet filled out my GDPR privacy form. What if my kids were accidentally filmed by the school doing something amazing and inspirational, which is very likely, then the school would have broken its privacy agreement and it would be in all kinds of trouble. I agreed to fill in the form once I'd saved the day, stepping in to play Santa because the real fake Santa was otherwise indisposed. She hurriedly stuffed the forms into my gloved hands and disappeared. Perhaps it was this chance meeting that set me off thinking, yeah, Santa's grotto, that's a bit like social media, isn't it? Bear with me. How strange I thought as I attached a dubious smelling and itchy white beard that my assiduous head teacher is worried over GDPR when at the same time the whole online world is constantly running roughshod over our privacy even if you have filled out the requisite forms. For example, for each child I filled with wonder that night I gave top-notch content to the parents who filmed and snapped away. They had, in turn, paid a pound so that I would create shareable memories for them all. Being Santa, I discovered, is what they call these days a transactional relationship. And by the end of a long evening, I have to admit that it was not just the beard that was slightly soiled, but also my sense of self as having been sold to create good content as much as treasured memories. We did everything we could that night to protect the privacy and innocence of those children. The parents had all given their GDPR consent forms. My elf was CRB cleared. I was in disguise to preserve the illusion of my existence. We were behind a curtain and so on. Yet within seconds of the child exiting the grotto of secrecy with a handful of chocolate coins, the parents were sharing the content left, right and centre. Santa's grotto, I realised as the hours wore on and the beard tickled and reeked, was the perfect metaphor for an idea I've been developing when I'm not playing Santa, but rather that other august, white-bearded figure, the Professor. We had, I believe, constructed a zone of privacy, that grotto. I had played a public character that was not me, but was an avatar or a kind of trolling. The privacy of all involved was protected by law through regulations that require forms. The cost of this privacy was part paid for by the parents. A restricted arena was composed by the school, a platform if you will, which cost money to decorate and which was hidden behind a curtain. A curtain that both shields you and which can be lifted to reveal you to the world, a bit like your phone screen. And yet, at the end of all that, the special personal interactions between Santa and the children, leading to things being said and done that would never be said and done in normal public, where children perhaps feel more inhibited, were then published to a potential billion-plus audience, precisely because they were special, intimate, innocent and personal, without inhibition. These are, after all, very much the qualities of something meme-worthy or shareable on certain social media platforms. The way those parents publish their private data, images mainly, is a good example of our conflicted contemporary idea of privacy, or what I call neo-privacy. Neo-privacy, like all historical forms of privacy, needs to be constructed, depends on an idea of the individual, requires a setup that is costly of time and space, which someone needs to pay for, in exchange for access to the privacy you have created with their support. As it is with Santa, so it is with all of you neo-private individuals, and so it has ever been throughout the history of the idea of the private sphere. Thanks everybody, I hope you enjoyed that and if you're interested in more of the same, why not subscribe to my channel or click on one of those links that usually run along the bottom of the screen.